So Borderlands 3 just released a brand new update, and this addresses various issues that were reported by the community. This includes some changes to the Vault Hunter skills, some miscellaneous changes, and a little bit more. So as usual on this channel, we're going to be covering everything you need to know about this new update. Now before we do get into the Vault Hunter hotfixes here, let's take a look at the top of the patch notes, and uh, this is actually to do with the Bloody Harvest event. Reading directly from the patch notes here it states, With this hotfix, the Bloody Harvest event is fading from Borderlands 3. As the event ends, you will no longer see haunted enemies, be able to travel to the Heck region, or be able to complete Bloody Harvest challenges until the spooky season returns next year. Thank you to everyone for the great feedback, your enjoyment, and the amazing spooky shots taken with the photo mode in Heck. We're taking what we've seen and heard from this event, and are exploring how to apply these learnings to the next one. So the Bloody Harvest event is officially gone, and unfortunately, any of the items that you didn't manage to obtain during the event, you'll have to wait until next year now before you can get them. One of the more notable ones was the Ghast Call Grenade. Uh, this is one of the better grenades in the game, but yeah, the event is now gone. Anyway, now moving on to the Vault Hunter hotfixes, and uh, this begins with Amara. Reading directly from the patch notes again here it states, addressed a reported issue where the movement speed bonus with Amara's passive ability known as Mindfulness, when buffed with the new Spiritual Driver class mod, was sometimes extremely high. They have given a description about this and uh, it states, Mindfulness was designed with the intent that reaching maximum stacks with Mindfulness was not easily achievable, so the bonus per grade was high. We want players to take advantage of the movement speed, but not to the extent where parts of the game may not function correctly. So mindfulness is getting a bit of a nerf there, and it's a shame because I was having a lot of fun. Um, essentially, for those of you who didn't know, mindfulness paired up with the spiritual driver, you pretty much had the ability to proc yourself with your own action skill and gain stacks of mindfulness super quickly. And uh, using that, you could zip around the map at like 100 miles an hour. And it was also a very viable combination for things like Mayhem 4. And while they have nerfed it, I am making this video before the patch is officially live, so I can't really test how it works now. But I do imagine that it's still going to be a very good combination. They've probably toned it down a little bit so you can't run at like, again, 100 miles an hour, but they've probably toned it down a bit. So we'll have to wait and see until we get in game, but I personally think it's still going to be very good either way. Anyway, moving on again, we have another issue with the Spiritual Driver class mod where it was apparently sometimes awarding damage for all types of damage and not just gun damage. As many of you will know, uh, the Spiritual Driver pretty much makes it so that the quicker you move, uh, the more gun damage you do. And I had no idea it was buffing all types of damage, so that's now been fixed and toned down to what it was supposed to be at. And now we move in to Zane. So uh, Zane's passive ability, known as Death Follows Close, apparently failed to bring correct bonuses to several kill skills after unlocking the ability in the skills menu. Uh, so that's now been fixed. They've also addressed a reported issue where Zane's passive ability, Nerves of Steel, would sometimes lose functionality after fast traveling. So another good skill fix there for Zane. Uh, for Moe's now, they fixed typos on the Desperate Measures and Stainless Steel Bear skills. Again, I, I didn't even notice that, but another change there for Moe's. And then the last one is for Flak. Another small one here, they have decreased the pet audio, so Flak's Jabba would be less vocal. Again, something I didn't really notice or was even bothered by, but either way, some changes there to the Vault Hunters. And now we move on to the miscellaneous changes. So for this section, it's more of map fixes and small little fixes here and there. And uh, to begin, they fixed a reported issue where some players could not hear the Flaming Schools from Billy the Anointed. They've also addressed a reported issue where loot was sometimes falling into an unreachable area in the Slaughter Star 3000. Obviously that's terrible, so I'm glad that that's now been fixed. Uh, they've also fixed multiple spots where players were sometimes able to escape the map in Skywild 27. I have no idea what players were using or how they were doing it, but 
that's now been patched as well. They've also fixed multiple spots where players would sometimes get stuck in the Ambermire region. In addition to this, they've fixed various areas in the Septic Sluice and the Green Diamond platform that allowed players to reach unintended areas. They've also fixed various areas on Pandora that sometimes allowed players to escape the map. And then for the final one, they fixed an issue where Brick's Sledgehammer would sometimes continuously spin after being thrown at an enemy during the mission Hammerlot. And that's pretty much it for the basics of the patch notes. Now they have talked about a few more things at the bottom of the patch notes, so jumping straight into that, it states, Hotfixes generally address smaller things, while patches contain code that must go through a lengthier patch process. The next patch will be coming later this month and will contain the first DLC, Mox's Heist of the Handsome Jackpot. It will also address reported concerns that we've seen in the last patch, including Guardian rank and additional vending machines in Skywell 27. And by the way, if you didn't know yet, they also released some new gameplay for the DLC earlier on today. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Moving on again here, it states, Max's Heist of the Handsome Jackpot will be available to players on December the 19th who have purchased the Season Pass or the Borderlands 3 Super Deluxe Edition. And then for the final segment, at the end of the month, look forward to spending the new year with Maliwan in Borderlands 3. In a limited time event, the takedown at Maliwan Black Site will be scaled depending on the number of players in your party. You'll be able to solo play or play with a party of any size to score all of that sweet takedown loot. And that's pretty much it for the patch notes. It wasn't a very big one today, but did contain some fundamental changes that you guys definitely needed to know. If you enjoyed the video today, be sure to leave a like down below. It's always greatly appreciated on the channel. Let's see if we can smash 2000 likes on this video and check out this video on screen now if you want to check out the top 10 new weapons in Borderlands 3.